Hello, I'm Bob Mile, founder of Tilting Motorworks. Welcome to our training video describing how the Trio with your Tilt Lock Tilting Front End works. The Trio Front End replaces your stock motorcycle's front wheel with our two wheel tilting front end. The front end just bolts right to your stock bike and it steers and handles like a regular motorcycle, but with the Tilt Lock function, as you slow down and come to a stop, the bike will actually lock up and you no longer have to put your feet down. Below one mile an hour, the system always is locked and leveling. Above seven miles an hour, the system is always unlocked and it handles like a regular motorcycle. Between one and seven miles an hour, it really depends on what the rider is doing with the motorcycle. If you just feather the clutch and you're slowly moving the bike around at a walking pace, the system will always stay locked and leveling. If you accelerate at any point, like you're leaving a stop sign or a stop light, the system automatically unlocks and the bike will handle like a regular motorcycle. If you're slowing down as though you're coming to a stop, as soon as you hit the seven mile an hour mark, the bike will lock and level in place. And what I mean by leveling is that the bike will always level to the horizon, not the road surface. So it actually holds the bike up just like a regular motorcyclist would. All right, we're gonna turn on the tilt lock system here. And you can see because it was on its side stand, it's actually leveling the bike in place. Once it's leveled it to the horizon, you no longer need your side stand. Once the bike's locked into place, it won't fall over. No matter how hard you want to push on it, the bike will actually still stay locked and leveled. You can put all your weight on one side of the motorcycle by standing on your floorboard and the bike will still stay locked and leveled in place. You probably had the experience of a passenger hopping on the rear of your motorcycle and you're not quite ready for it. With the tilt lock system, they can put all their weight on that rear peg and the bike will still stay locked right in place. The tilt lock system utilizes three types of sensors for its system. There's speed sensors on the wheels, there's steering sensor on the steering shaft, and on the circuit board itself there's an accelerometer chip. The speed sensors measure not only the speed, but the direction of the wheels because your tilt lock system functions so that as the bike is moving in reverse, the system is always locked in place. So if you're backing down a hill or backing down a driveway, your tilt lock system will always stay locked and leveling for you. Your steering sensor is there for two purposes. If you turn your handlebars when you're at a stop, it'll pre-lean the bike in the direction you turn your handlebars. This makes initiating your turns a lot easier. Steering sensor also helps out if you have your handlebars full lock to the left or full lock to the right, it'll keep the system locked and leveling in place so you can easily do a U-turn. The third sensor is your accelerometer chip. This is a chip that measures whether the bike's level or not and will always level the bike to the horizon. You turn your tilt lock system on by pressing this handlebar mounted switch. You can either be on or off the bike. Just be aware, if you're off the motorcycle and you have the bike in neutral, the bike can potentially roll away. So best to be go ahead on the bike and hold the bike in place. You can turn the tilt lock system on with the engine already running or with the engine off. If you turn the tilt lock system on and your engine is not running and then you fire up your engine, if you've got a weak battery, that engine can then suck all the power away from the tilt lock system and momentarily turn it off. Just make sure you have your feet down if that were to occur. Okay, welcome to our first training exercise for the tilt lock system. First thing you want to do is turn your tilt lock system on. Once the bike is locked and leveled, you can go ahead and start the engine. If you slowly feather the clutch, you'll see that the tilt lock light is still green, meaning that the bike is still locked and leveling. As soon as you give it gas, the light will automatically turn blue and it'll be handling just like a regular bike. When you start off from a stop, you just want to give it gas just as though you're taking off from a regular stop and it'll handle just like a regular motorcycle. So see, we initiate the first corner here. You lean the bike way over. In this small of a course, you're probably never ever getting out of first gear. Now, as we take the second corner here, you'll have the bike leaned over. What you want to make sure you do is as you come to a stop, you want to have the bike leveled up, apply the brakes firmly and come to a stop. Go ahead and then release your clutch again, give it gas, and do another lap. Again, taking the corner at a comfortable speed. You don't really have to race around the course. It's just to get you that experience of actually starting and stopping from a straight line. If you come to a stop while the bike is still leaned over at an angle, the system will actually still lock you in place 
and then level the bike right up. Then you can start again whenever you'd like. For our next training exercise, we're gonna work on keeping the tilt lock system always on below seven miles an hour. How you do that is by slowly feathering your clutch as you move the bike along. You just keep the bike moving at about a walking pace as you slowly do S turns around the cones. Let's go ahead and go. A couple other things to keep in mind as you're slowly moving around the cones. One, you no longer have to put your feet down, and two, you may feel the bike moving slightly to the left and to the right, and that's simply the shocks compressing. For our next tilt lock training exercise, we're going to be doing figure eights. First, start off the bike with the tilt lock system on and do figure eights around the cones till you're comfortable. Once you're comfortable with that, come to a stop in the middle between the two sets of cones, then start up again, and then do a right hand turn, come around the cones, stop again in the middle, then start up again, and do a left hand turn. Do that several times so you're comfortable with that motion. The next exercise we're going to do is working on left hand turns from a stop. These two cones on either side of the bike represent a stop line that you would find in front of a stop sign or a stop light. We're gonna start from our stop and make a left-hand turn. We have cones on the other side of us that represent the far side curb. Our next exercise is going to be focusing on doing a right hand turn from a stop. Usually right hand turns you have a little bit less room to maneuver than a left hand turn. So it's really important to get started, give it gas, and get going. You can see right here I'm actually stopped a little behind the cones, and so which means that as soon as I cross those cones, my light will be blue, which means that I'll be able to lean. So I'm going to just get started. As soon as I cross those cones, I'm going to initiate my lane. Our next exercise we're going to work on is tight U-turns. This turn either works to the left or to the right. We're going to show it to the left. Now this can be a very difficult maneuver with a larger touring bike, but it's very easy with your trio equipped tilt lock. Turn your handlebars hard to the left and then slowly ease on the clutch. You, it'll keep the bike locked up under 7 miles an hour at all times. As soon as you've completed your 180 degree turn, Straighten out your handlebars and come to a stop. Thank you for watching Tilting Motorworks instructional video on the tilt lock system. Hopefully you're able to learn a few new skills and I really suggest that you go and try this out in a parking lot on your own and have a lot of fun. Enjoy your tilt lock system.